Hi, I'm Iris Fritz, and I'm a math instructor with the Gateway Program, housed in the Elfman Student Success Center at Dunwoody College of Technology. I'd like to welcome you today to learn how to make 12 formulas out of two formulas using Ohm's Law. The last three formulas that I want to develop with you will use E and R to solve for P and then we'll take that form and we'll go on from there. So we just have three formulas left from the 12 formula, formula Ohm's Law memory wheel. If you look at this with me, I'm going to ask that we solve for P given E and R. And if you remember, we know that E divided by R gives us I. That was from earlier on. As well as P equals I times E. So right now, looking at what we know, we're asked to solve for P given I times E. But what's missing for us is another is I, current. So what we're going to do is we're going to take what we know and we're going to substitute into the formula another way to look at current using just E and R. If I take voltage, I want to use some of the language of your science, and divide it by resistance, this is just another way to look at I, isn't it? E divided by R indeed gives us I. And now let's simplify this. If I multiply E over R times E, remember E is as if it's over 1. It will sit up in the numerator. I will get E squared over R. And this is another formula on your wheel. Now, if this didn't make sense to you, I'm just going to walk over here for a second and remind you how to multiply fractions. Looking at this, I have E over R times E. And we can take anything and put it over 1, and it's just another way to write what we're referring to here. And if we do the math, E times E gives me E squared. R times 1 is what gives us the R here. So hopefully that helped you remember how to play out simplifying fractions. Now let's take this and let's solve for E as well as R using what you know now regarding opposite operations. And remember, whatever you do to one side, make sure you do it to the other to keep this equal at all times. We have P is equal to E squared R. Let's first solve for E. I take what's given. I can look at P as if it's over 1. And if you remember, when you have a fraction equaling a fraction, we can use a very nice shortcut that will allow us to change the form of this, but not what it means, by cross multiplying. So I'm going to cross multiply. I will have P times R is equal to E squared times 1, which is just E squared. And now it's getting very easy, if you will. It should feel much more comfortable now to solve for E. The opposite of squaring something is to take the square root. So I'm going to write this again as to avoid us getting lost. I want to get E by itself, not E squared. The opposite operation is to take the square root. What I do to one side, I must do to the other to keep this equal. And you can see that this will cancel. And my final form of this is the square root of P times R is equal to E. So if you will, we just did a nice job of untangling that knot. And that is nearly the last formula that's on your memory wheel. Now what I'd like to do is to take this formula and solve for R. And then we'll be done. You're almost there. So let's just do that right here.
taking what we have put together by substitution. I want to take this formula now and I want to solve for R. And if you remember from the last round working with this, I was able to take P and put it over 1 and set up a very nice process of cross multiplication. It's called the cross product process to help us eventually solve for R. So if we do the cross multiplication, we get P times R is equal to E squared times 1. This should look familiar from the last round. But this time, we're solving for R, not P times R. The opposite operation is to divide by what I want to move over to the other side. I don't want that P there. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other to keep this equal. It cancels from this side and shifts the relationship over. So I have R is equal to E squared divided by P. And this should help you understand at least where this memory wheel came from. It did not come from outer space. And you should also have a good feel for being able to now take a formula and to, if you will, untangle it and isolate and solve for the unknown. And please visit us at the Elfman Student Success Center. I am there daily waiting to help you if you need extra help with transposing formulas. Thanks.